My name is Michael Cini. I wanted to make a quick video after seeing it one recently from a fellow police officer who pointed out and was very verbal about his thoughts that I believe many of us share. I decided to make my own video, encourage others to do the same. What we've seen in recent months is none other than what I believe is going to be viewed as one of the biggest power grabs in American history. We've seen the Constitution seemingly suspended and constitutional rights of citizens tossed aside under the guise of safety and security, something that we've seen before as well. You know, I swore an oath to the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and I stand on that oath, and I will continue to stand on that oath, and there is not a human being that can alter my oath between myself and the Constitution, myself and God. You know, choice means having multiple options. If you find yourself only looking at what you see on one new source or the other, that's not choice. You're just falling in line. You know, I ask every human being and every American citizen to question things and look at them, look at both sides. Anyone that knows me from my political side of my life knows that I don't really walk one side hard left or hard right. I stand somewhere in the middle, a place I am proud to be. But you have to look and at least acknowledge some of these videos like Plandemic, where we have doctors out there talking about some things that are inconsistent with what you're seeing in mainstream media. At least look at it. Look at it and then decide, okay, does that make sense or not? And make a choice. Because that's what freedom's about, choice. But if you're not even watching these things and you're just taking one side and just eating every bit of it and projecting it, then what are you really? Sheep, okay? We look for more than that and expect more. You're supposed to educate yourself before you vote. I always do. I read things. That's part of where I've made it this far in life and my opinions made because I make them. I judge nobody by what anyone says. I judge them on my own interactions. You should judge this entire situation on your personal interactions and see what you come up with. You know, as far as immune system goes, I find it so troubling that people are so quick to lock themselves in their house for 60, 90 days. Yes, Corona is terrible. Yes, it's killing people and that scares me. But I always look for a strategy to beat something, not just to barely survive, okay? I'm out there every single day dealing with people and dirty germs and I've been just fine. Even per Governor Cuomo's daily news, and I'm gonna post a picture on here, today I took a screenshot of his newscast. And as of today, May 7th, he put out there that 66% of new corona cases are coming from people that are not leaving their house. Ask yourself why. Well, if you look at any of these doctors that recently put a video up about your immune system, it's that every one of us goes out there and touches dirty germs all day, every day. Children do it all during your existence. And those germs ultimately serve to increase and boost your immune system's ability to fight common things like even say a cold. Now, ask yourself, if somebody's in their house for 120 days surrounded by Lysol and no new germs, no germs, no immune system activation from 90 days of being around the same exact things, what do you think's gonna happen in the fall when they start to leave their house? I would suggest a common cold is now gonna possibly spike their fever and put them in the hospital. That's problematic. That's gonna cause a hospital overflow. Young 20 year olds that have perfectly healthy immune systems can keep social distancing. I just call that self-respect. But to lock yourself away from society and shut down our economy and deteriorate our entire society's immune systems, it's not right. As of today, 66% of new cases of corona are coming from people that are from their home, have not left their home, yet they get it. Do they touch groceries? Do they have Amazon still coming to their house? I'm pretty sure they do, and they're still getting it. Those of us that are out here every day have seemingly have herd immunity. I'm not afraid to say that anymore. The truth is I remember being sick months ago. I know many people that have, and we're just okay now. Think about that. Think about your own interactions and see if you can really say that you've given this the thought of both sides or are you just following along? Another thing that should flag to any of us is censorship. I've been censored more times in the last two months than I have 
ever in my life. And when I say censored, I mean I put things on Facebook. I'm not getting a notice that says, hey, you violated our policy. This can't be on there. That hasn't happened to me one time. I don't even know what that looks like. But I know that I've communicated with people and within a couple volleys of thread in the public setting, the entire thread disappears and that's just that. Last time it happened to me was yesterday. I was in communication with a young female who basically pointed out some inconsistencies in the media. Scrolling through, I said, you're exactly right. Look into this. She said something, I said something, entire thread disappeared. She then reached out to me and said, did you erase it? No, I didn't. She's confused. How did that just happen? That's never happened to her before. I told her, welcome to the club. The censorship going on right now on social media is alarming. It should alarm you. Videos are being taken down under the guise of for public safety. And here's another point that fires me up to no end. When you have men in power literally saying that you are not allowed to protest during the pandemic. You're not allowed to protest during the pandemic? You're right, you don't want people on top of each other. But then you need to stop making laws and changing things. The entire American system of government is based on the fact that you work for the people. And when you push the people too hard, they come together and tell you you need to knock it off. So when you're saying you cannot exercise that hugely important American right, but you're still continuing to make laws and change things and implement changes that have far reaching effects, do you see the monopoly here? Don't protest, not allowed to protest, don't leave your house, but we're gonna change X, Y, Z. And then suddenly I see Bill Gates, Bill Gates, suddenly in charge of New York education. He's got no background in that. He's a good computer guy. I don't buy any of this. You wanna change our entire way of life based on something that has a kill. It does kill, but at a smaller number than they've projected. And some people are willing to change our entire way of life. I despise every single time I'm forced as a healthy person to walk around here with a mask on. I don't like it. It's unconstitutional. It is completely unconstitutional. So if you're okay with it, at least be able to admit and say, yes, it is unconstitutional, but I support breaking the constitution from time to time. But don't sit here and say somehow that anybody that dissents your opinion that you should be locked in your house for three months or four months is somehow not supporting the team. I'm out here supporting the team every day. I've served in combat theaters all over this world. And there's that other point I wanted to make. This other police officer did too. He's this army special operations uh, operator and now he's a police officer. And he brings a great point and it, it hit me hard this morning when I watched his video. He says flat out, you know, how terrible combat is. And that a lot of these people don't understand how close it could be when you really start trampling on people's rights for them to rise up. That is part of the American spirit. And we're seeing these people start to talk and the chatter's up, hence, you know, all the suppression on social media. I've been overseas and I've been in combat and it's terrifying. And that was in a country that has been abused for hundreds of years under a complete and utter dictatorship. And with old equipment and limited supplies, they put up one heck of a fight. Those of you out there that think that somehow Americans are just gonna roll over and continue to let you trample all over their rights, especially you police officers, I will tell you, I am not naive to what some of the people in this world have, and Americans especially, the kind of hardware they keep locked in deep, dark places. And I am well aware of their fighting spirit because five years ago, six years ago, I was one of them too. I put on a badge because I'm proud to serve my community in a helpful manner. I wear this badge right here because I support the Constitution of the United States of America, and I've already accepted and resigned myself that I'd be willing to risk my life over you know, for anyone else's that I, I stated an oath to serve. In this case, me being verbal right now is the same exact concept. People need to open their eyes. Look what's going on. Look at multiple media sources. Look at some of these videos and really ask yourself if this is all making sense to you. Do these steps are we taking? Are they effective? If they are effective, how is 66% of new Corona cases in New York coming from people that haven't left their house? Think on that for a minute. Just know if you're a police officer out there, I hope you all start to really get the nerve to speak your mind and speak the truth. 
point out these things and hopefully others will join. They're starting to see doctors out there and come together to really make it clear that we support the Constitution. We support human life and protecting the most human life we can in this country. And we can't do that if we cripple our economy and send our young and healthy to erase their immune systems in their homes. I support everyone's right of free choice. Whether you wanna stay in your house for one year or for not, that's up to you and I support every bit of your right to do that because this is America. But stop virtue signaling and acting like the rest of us are criminals because we wanna go visit our relative who wants to visit us. Because I'll tell you right now, I visit my family. Yes, I do. And I'll continue to do that. And there's not a human being that's gonna stop me from doing that. To the rest of you out there, I wish you all the best. Be safe, educate yourself, and just know there are officers out here that understand what's going on. And we stand to defend the oath to the Constitution above all else. Thanks. Hey, Mike Sini here, Deputy Sini. Well, got in a little trouble for that video the other day. And I will start off by saying it shouldn't have been in uniform. But I want to give you the build up and as to why I felt the need to do that so immediately. On that day, I was on patrol, and I already watched that video in the morning of their officer, as I described, and, and everything he said is spot on. I hope the rest of you have seen that video as well. Um, but ultimately, I ended up pulling into Stewart's, and I'm sitting there, and I'm just about to get out of the car myself. Some guy pulls next to me, looks like me five years ago, and I watched him look at me and then immediately become extremely uncomfortable. Then I watched him, I could just see him cursing and throwing things around in his car, he started throwing stuff in the back and he's just getting pissed off. And I could see that, it's very easy to see. And finally he finds a, like a little girl's t-shirt is what a doll's t-shirt. I don't even know what little pink rag he had, but he just held it in front of his face and got out of the car. So I got out of the car because I immediately had like a, a knot in my stomach that all of a sudden he's looking at me like I'm the problem here. Like I'm gonna be the one that leans into him. Like he doesn't have enough going on in this world and all of a sudden he's got to worry about me, you know, jumping down his neck. So anyway, I ended up coming over. I said, hey, and as soon as he heard that defensive as could be, was upset. Like, what, could, what, what do you want? I said, well, we're on the same team. We're on the same team. He kind of froze and we talked for a couple minutes and I, I told him, you know, get your coffee. I put my mask on to go into Stewart's as well. But I wanted to make it clear that we're on the same team. Like these people are stressing out that we're, we're not against you, you know, enough Things are going on with police. The last in the world, this guy trying to get a coffee to go into Stewart's was looking at me like I'm the threat, like I'm gonna freak out at him. I'm not. That fired me up. I went to my spot and I made that video. I'll tell you, shouldn't have done it while I was in uniform. I'm currently suspended without pay for a couple of weeks. That's okay. Do the crime, do the time. So I'll sit here and I'll take that. You know, I'm a little surprised by the no pay thing, but um. I made my point and honestly I stand by every single word that I said before and sometimes doing the right thing costs you a little bit here I am I got my kids for a couple extra weeks and one other thing I thought was interesting is you know with my newly found time off um, I thought to myself I got a lot of marine friends they're all over the country down in Florida they're in Texas they're in California Idaho I could go on and on but I think I'm gonna go talk to them and see what they think as police officers around the country, how they're dealing with this and what their perceptions are as a bunch of Marine Corps combat veteran police officers. Stand by for those videos. Be safe, everyone, and uh, keep your eyes open.